All righty. I guess we are going to start with you, Bex. Would you like to start? Certainly. Um, all right, sorry, I was weirded out because suddenly I couldn't find myself in the Brady Bunch and I was thinking that I had disconnected. Um, Y'all should square up. So, hi. Uh, this is my last meeting as the Red Hat liaison to the CentOS Project Board. Um, I am going to be changing roles and taking on some new things. And so in the interim, Josh has agreed to step up and serve as the acting liaison in my place. Um, Ron is my manager, which is part of the reason that he has joined the call this evening, but he also is a point of contact for the board. Um, and that's the big piece of information we wanted to let you know. Yeah, on, on my side, uh, I think the way that logistically this works is I'm, I'm abdicating my seat on the board as a board member at large. I will take the role temporarily until Ron can find the appropriate person to put in place. Uh, and then at that point, if I decide to stay on the board, I will run for re-election uh, as a member at large that way. So I think that's the best way to make this transition. Okay, so you are stepping down. We will be holding an election. And if in the future there is another opening, you will be rerunning, just to be clear. Yeah, I'll make the decision at that point in time. Okay. Well, then I want to say thank you for your individual service, Josh. Um, and I think you will also be a good voice for Red Hat. Because sometimes you put on the Red Hat <laughs> I'm going to model You're very good at putting on the Red Hat on. Are there any questions, concerns? Remember, we do have the hold your hand up if you'd like to speak role. Pat? I just thanks for all of the work over the years, Bex. And I think we all wish you well in your transition to a new role and to maybe more reasonable hours. Um, I heard a beep. Nope. That was me trying um, to lower my get re raised. Okay. Um, just so everyone is aware, Bex did inform the group at the face to face. So if you're not here, I Bex, we're going to misuse. We've already said them to his face in person. Um, but yes, you will. And we will remember you fondly when we look at the calendar system. Thank you very much. And if you move the meeting to a regular time, perhaps you'll see me occasionally. Um, so if there is no more comments in this regard from at large, go ahead, Sean. Uh, so just logistically, that means I need to um, solicit for nominations. I believe it's a 30-day period, so I'll post to CentOS Devel, uh, and then there'll be a 30-day nomination period. So we'd be looking at um, at doing elections towards the end of September then. Is that good for anyone? We can push it back and make it longer if we want, but we can't make it shorter. Um, I would say that will be good because I believe Josh was in the summer cohort or the June, July cohort, I should say. Yes. So yes. that won't make it that far off. Okay. And Sean, I'll, I'll send an email to like the Cento Estabelle list kind of summarizing this as well. So. Oh, great. Great. Yes. That'd be good. And then I'll, I'll wait for that before kicking off the okay. process. Thank you. And Bex, if you also want to send a goodbye to the develop list or the sent to us list, that would be appreciated. Um, anyone else have a comment? I think we lost Jeffro. Jeffro will we be back. I'm sure he will be back. Um, Brendan, you are up as our guest. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I know many of you, but not all of you. So let me do a quick introduction. I am a manager at Red Hat. I've been here for 25 years and currently community platform engineering is one of my teams. So those are the release engineers and sysadmins and designers and developers, primarily who work in the Fedora space, but also who support CentOS with uh, things like system administration. And at Flock a couple weeks ago, uh, 
I met some of you for the first time, Pat and Amy, uh, though we didn't have enough time to talk. And But at the at FWAC, a few things kind of caught my attention, and I wanted to see if there's if there's a thing that we could do that we've never done before. So on my side, inside CPE, we have uh, we have a lot of our our day to day take place inside uh, matrix chat and and like meetings and whatnot are there, and we also have like internal meetings and so forth. And one of the things that I've noticed is that in recent years, uh, CPE has gotten a little bit more kind of inward focused. Like it's like it's harder to be a member of the Fedora community and do things. Uh, if you aren't also employed by Red Hat and in CPE. And I'm hoping to change that by making more CPE's activities uh, take place in an external environment. So that's something that'll be coming in, in the weeks ahead. But when I was at Flock, I, I noticed a thing. And the thing was that we had great CentOS presence there. We had great Fedora presence there. We even had really good RHEL presence there. Uh, while I'm currently the CPE manager of my background, was actually working with folks like Josh and Rel, and uh, I still spend a lot of time in that space. But I, and this is what I noticed is that while we are all friends, while we all have relationships with one another, there is no real coordinating activity or communication mechanism or forum or whatnot between Fedora leadership and CentOS leadership and Rel leadership. And when I say leadership, I don't mean managers like Ron or myself, like. Generally, you don't see managers in any of these places because we don't actually want to like get in the way of associates doing like doing the work in the spaces. Like Troy, it would just be interference, right? Like you don't want us bugging you. Like that would, that would suck. So generally, we stay out. Uh, but sometimes we we notice things like, hey, there's a thing missing. I think that doesn't exist right now that maybe should exist. So I'm starting a socialization activity and uh, your your early uh, participants in here. So this is one of my favorite things to do is come up with half-baked ideas so we can bake things together. Uh, and what I would like to do is organize some sort of activity where uh, members of the CentOS board, uh, Fedora leads, RHEL leads, people that you already know, but you don't interact with in this capacity, like in an official way, where we get together on a regular basis. And maybe that is we have a common chat channel, maybe that's we have a meeting, but a place where we get together and talk about what we are doing so that we can share in it. Because the when I look at what the future is, like future challenges and goals uh, in the Fedora space, we are probably moving issue tracking systems, we're moving Git forges, we're probably changing the build system pipeline. Uh, and consolidating CI systems. There's like there's a lot of activity around those spaces. We have a we've had a proliferation of infrastructure. We want to consolidate it back down to a manageable set, a better set, and one that we're all like proud of technically and socially. So that's a thing that we'll be doing in the Fedora space. But it would be naive to think that that's not going to have a downstream effect on CentOS or downstream effect on Rel. But we still don't have like a mechanism by which we can say, hey, we're doing this cool thing. Would you like to do this cool thing with us? Would you be affected by this cool thing we're doing? Let's make plans together. So I wanted to check and see if you'd like to be part of something like that. Like without without saying, yes, I'm absolutely in. Just does this sound good? Does this sound like something you'd like to explore together? Because if it is, I want to go to the next group and ask the same question and then cycle through. And as we as we gain momentum, kind of build out what it means. Because I don't know exactly, is it a meeting? Like managers are made for meetings, but uh, is it is it a regular communication of what? Something, but I want us to do it together. All right, okay, you're on a pause. Davida has a question. Sorry, I'm really off because this place is really busy. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, this is a great idea and it's something I definitely support. Um, I think having some kind of consistent channel where we can have ongoing conversations. So more than like, I think having check-ins where we can meet like face-to-face -face or in video meetings is great, but I think having some kind of like long running matrix room or something where all the right people are there and folks can raise points and have like conversations is definitely valuable. I find that often we end up having to rely on back channels 
And like the people in this room can do that because we all know each other, but that's not necessarily an option all the time everywhere. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, you were talking earlier about CTE, and one thing that I think would be really great is we could find more ways that people in the community that don't work for head up can help CTE with tasks, can help on specific things. Like historically, it's been really difficult for people to contribute on inference is admining things because so many of these tasks require access and obviously non-employees don't have that kind of access. So figuring that out and figuring out ways that, um, say, companies that aren't right that can contribute resources in a meaningful way that doesn't just require like finding somehow space in the community case, like figuring solutions for these challenges is definitely something that would be great to have. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna have my own raised hand. Um, these, I know I have talked about the face-to-face -face in this agenda as well, but these are some of the things we did talk as a board during the meeting. So we're kind of, at least I'm kind of excited that you're bringing this to us because these are things that we were looking to do um, because it it is hard to have, you know, basically multiple infrastructures doing sem very similar things. Um, even Sean's been looking at, can we combine calendars, you know? I think if ideally, if we could have like using the calendar for an example, sent to us cal.fedoraproject.org. I think we'd be all fine with, you know, making, you know, C names for using the same infrastructure. I don't think anyone would really complain if we're helping over all the infrastructure by doing something like that versus, no, we have our machine here. We have our machine there. Um, one of the things that we did talk about with Mike McLean, as David mentioned, was the cab the um, cabinet, you know, the cage. If we can combine stuff and, you know, share stuff and use VPNs in between different locations, you know, these are all things that we might be able to offer that currently we can't. Um, Sean put, made the comment. I'm about to have dog bark, so sorry. We did combine infra with mailing lists recently as an example. So, I mean, some things have already happened, but this is something we're definitely interested in doing um, because right now we have Fabian and only Fabian, um, and that is not fair to him. He repaired stuff while he was on PTO one time and having shared resources. And as David has said, if there's ways that we can help, even if it means that hardware is connected via VPN, but we can have people running that machine and help C CP in that way. These are all things we discussed and are interested in trying to do for you. Okay. Well, I love that you mentioned uh, shared calendar because that wasn't even on my radar. And that's the thing is that uh, whatever whatever you heard and you thought of, it might be different than what I was thinking of because you know I'm thinking like, maybe the same chat server or maybe the same brew builder or, or Koji server or what have you. Uh, so like it, the more we think about it, the more we talk about it, like, oh yeah, why are we doing these redundant things? And, and also uh, what are some of the things that we're doing in one space that we're not doing in another that actually it'd be a really good idea if we did that. Uh, these, are, these are the things that are on my mind. So, uh, I'm not hearing any no's on this. I'm hearing like some tentative yeses. I saw some some hearts and, and thumbs up go by. So uh, is there anyone who's like, no, oh, no, this isn't the right thing to do? Or is this a thing to pursue? Troy? Um, I'm in agreement with it. Uh, what's going through my mind is what's the next step? So, all right, I have a partial answer to that. Uh, but Josh has a hand up too. I do. Okay, Josh. I, I think I heard you say this, but I wanted to be extra clear. In this collaboration, is it is it just between your team, the board, and the Fedora Council, or is it open like? Is it open or is it closed? I guess is the the root of the question, right? I think it's open. Like the the thing that I want to practice in my team is open by default. We always have the option to do one off closed things, but I think we should we should default to open because we don't know who the next 
the next person who does the cool thing that we all talk about for decades on is where they're going to come from. I just know that I want to, them to do it where we are. Okay. Thank you. Tomas. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, I think he, uh, as well, plus one on this ID. It's a great ID. And I just, uh, yeah, I think uh, we have a lot of uh, points where we want to collaborate and where it would be possible. So uh, I, I plus one as well for the openness. I think it's nice that everybody can join and give ID and as uh, maybe someone has an idea of what we could uh, put together. So yeah, uh, we like the idea as well to be, to keep it open. Okay, and Amy said C names, but I'm okay with A records as well. Like either way is good. Hey, it's been a long time since I've had to set up a name server. All right. So Anyone else then, have any, any questions or comments from Brendan? I think we're all, it, it seems like the board for sure, and, and members of the community who are here are also in favor of this effort. Okay, so Troy did have a question, and uh, Troy, I think the next step then is because there is a general supported interest here, uh, I can go back to rail leadership and federal leadership and say, hey, talk to the CentOS board. They're tentatively interested. Uh, let's make sure that they're interested in the same things. And this is a public meeting. There's going to be minutes and whatnot. So I can even like point them to the, the details. Uh, so we'll all be on the same page. And then based on how those conversations go, uh, I would come back uh, in the not too distant future or start an email thread. Uh, so I have an activity that I need to do next, but what would you like me to do next specifically with, with you all? I would think a proposal of where you think we can combine, where you think we have difficulties so that you know those may be things that we need to act on um but i think putting a plan on how to move forward i think is a great next step where we can give feedback onto it um and then also you know having the first meeting where you know fedora has their list of things we have our list of things rel has their list of things and we try to see where we can all work together and combine to start this and then add things in as time goes on and we get used to the process. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the way you answered that made me think that the, the way I meant things was slightly different than the way you interpreted them. So um, that is ex like the thing you just said is exactly what I would hope to have follow, but I think there's a step before that. So for, for what I'm thinking about this, just like with my facilitator hat on, I think, okay, there, we would need to establish a forum for for where these conversations would take place. We would need to identify like how we want to use it. And and then once we've done that, that's when we would bring the, the things that we are doing that would be of, of shared interest. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I can see it going that way first. Um, because you're putting everyone together and then putting together the thing. And then I was thinking we would put together the thing and then bring everyone together to discuss their different aspects of it. Um, Davide? Um, why don't we say, once we agreed on everybody that is interested in participating in this, we call a meeting and we, we discuss in the meeting how this is going to work. And as part of that, we figure out, oh, are we going to have a meter channel? Are we going to do regular meetings? What are we going to do for minutes and all of that? And then we can take it from there. OK, so I could, as a next step, after I've gotten uh, sufficient buy-in from the other two uh, groups, propose a follow-up meeting in which like everybody is there and we talk about it, is that Okay, well, I can do that. Let's go with that. Tomas? I think having uh, as well a note on CentOS Devel, so we catch all the SIGs uh, member and thing would be nice when to say like we are planning to, to have this initial meeting. If you If you want to join, please join. My wife has a saying, start as you mean to go on.
So works for me. Is that me sending an and email? Think, Just to be clear. Um, like, we can coordinate. Here. We can draft something and we decide who send it. Sean can send it, maybe. I don't know. Uh, up to whatever makes more sense to to start the discussion. Pat? I would be inclined to have Brendan send it because he's going to have the uh, most comprehensive picture of who's coming in. So in like my ideal world, it is sent to CentOS DL and CC to Fedora DL and probably BCC to the private rel list, but that the email itself would be identical. So why have him write it three times? You good with that, Brendan? Yeah, I think I can swing that. All right, so if I understand what I signed up for correctly, and what you've all signed up for correctly, uh, at the end of this call, per usual, there will be minutes, there will be a recording, uh, that'll go to the list. Uh, I will then use that in part to facilitate further conversations with Rel and Fedora leadership. Uh, once I have had a similar sort of discussion with them that I've had with you all, I will compose an email that goes to CentOS Devel, uh, Fedora Devel, TBD on, on those lists. Like I'll, I'll take the advice of the, the leads I talked to and um, from there, that that message will communicate. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna have a combined thing where we talk about this together, and then probably I'll organize it again with Google Meet, uh, and from there we can talk about like what our what our big three way interests are, and how we want to work together on them. Does that sound right? Yeah, and once we know who's attending and so on and so forth, then figuring out the best day time to hold something with that range of people, I think will be important. Tomas? Yeah, just one thing that I was thinking, uh, I think we should just uh, draft the email in a way that um, we don't want to impose all choice between all community like, to make it clear that it will be a discussion on where we can collaborate because of obvious area where we won't be able to do exactly the same. So I think it's it's why I was saying drafting maybe worth to go through a, a draft altogether before sending it. I'd be happy to do a shared draft. Like, like if you've got a, an account that I can share a Google Doc with, we'll do that. Awesome. All right. Any other comments, questions, concerns from Brendan? All righty. Then we are moving on the agenda to the face to face meeting, which in part had a very similar discussion about how we could share resources. Um, but we also touched on things like improving communication um, and working together, making sure external and internal communicated better. Um, th that was also something we brought up to Mike McGrath to make sure that we have a process and it does start with making an initial JIRA ticket before you do anything. And we need to be better about making sure the process is followed because that will increase communication because in the case of like a cve or something that is already being worked on by maintainers nobody's doing work that is then going to feel like it got stepped on or neglected um so that was one of the big ones um also trying to determine who streams audiences um, and this is things that are going to come out on the new website, like having a mission statement for stream um, and other things like that. Uh, we did come up with a few different use cases for the mission statement. Um, the audience was people who use RHEL and want to get a preview, people who use RHEL and affect the current and future versions, and people who consume CentOS artifacts were the three main big ones. Um, 
And then we also mentioned people who build on stream artifacts in a SIG, which is um, automotive. We have Rosso, but I don't know if that's my Rosso, which is Red Hat OpenStack Services on OpenShift, um, and OKD, which is OpenShift and has cost Red Hat's costs. Um, any questions on that? Maybe what, one other point we discussed was to improve the website to have more visibility for SIG, because I think it was one of the important things as well that uh, we want to promote more the SIG and how SIG are working with stream because SIGs are really an important metric for us to see how many people contribute and what uh, is done. So I think that was one of my my uh, things that I think was quite important to to share as well. Yeah, and you, you were not at the docs days. Um, Sean is doing an awesome job on the revamp. Um, that is going to have individual pages for each of the SIGs. Huh. If you look in the chat, Sean has a preview snapshot of what it'll look like, but like each SIG will have how you download their artifacts. So if it's an ISO, you can just click on the ISO. In the case, for example, of Cloud SIG, um, a link to the repos where you can get the what they're working on. So yes, the SIGs are definitely getting a push and more prominence on the new website. Um, skipping over to Doc Days, we did some really good work moving forward there as well. Um, made some minor adjustments on the current website, but um, I've talked to Sean and we will definitely have a new website. We're hoping, I say definitely and we're hoping, by Connect. Um, <laughs> So yes, um, a lot of good work there. Um, we do have a couple issues to a lawn on the um, artwork side. Um, minor things of just not aligning up on the graphical side and things like that. So yes, SIGs are definitely getting a nice big push um, on the new website. And then we can skip that because we already talked about that. Um, I think that's a really good high level overview. I'm um, just glancing through the notes real quick. Someone raised a hand. Troy, go ahead. Um, talking about SIGs, the SIG guide, uh, I brought over vast majority of the stuff from the SIG guide wiki to our documentation. Um, so if you go to the SIG guide, it's it's more helpful than it was before. And now we just have to get all the SIGs to update their stuff, but it's a start. Um, David. Thanks. And talking about docs, uh, one of the things we also did, I put together a potential replacement for docsocentos.org that kind of collates all of the existing documentation repository into one place. And ideally, this is where the, the repos we made in the previous docs stage for the project docs and the big docs would go in as well so we still need to flesh those out but i think once we have at least a contributor's guide in there which is the only useful content that's left on docs.centers.org uh, we can just replace wholesale docs.centers.org and continue iterating on this another doc update we are hoping to hi ronald um we are hoping to schedule another docs day adjacent to connect so make your plans to join us and as we get these docs back in line and everything hopefully it'll be a whole lot easier for other people to contribute to them as well um because this really shouldn't be a board level endeavor it, it should definitely be an everybody endeavor to work on the docs any other questions concerns there Alrighty. Um, I don't think there's any. Oh, that's not what I was thinking of. I was going to say there aren't any GitHub issues that need to be merged. I took that out. Um, new issues. This is yours from today, Sean. Number 128, retire public CI SIG. Yeah. Um, it's just, you don't have to act on this right now. I just uh, 
So there are four that the board already agreed to, and it's a matter of going through the process. And part of the process is I'm filing a, a ticket to track the progress on it. So we have a ticket open for config management. I just opened one for public CI and sent the email to Devel. And then um, the other two that I need to do are uh, art, alt architectures and um, um, Jesus, um, software collections. Uh, Feature request. Okay. Software collections has never existed. I, I'll double check on that actually. But um, anyway, you don't have yeah, to act had, on this issue right now. Okay. And we had five that I put on the unhold list um, just because they were still open. So if there's any comments you need to add to them, but I'm getting the feeling like those are not ones that we need to work on as a board. Davide? Uh, sorry, Sean, to clarify, did we already vote to retire public CI or is that uh, up for a vote now? No, that was that was voted on months ago to to begin the process of, you know, soliciting to see if anybody wants to revive it and otherwise retiring it. Got uh, it, thanks. Me too, but that's what I put in my notes. Yeah, some of them were on hold until we got the um, governance up. So that's why there's a big gap in when we last worked on these and now, because we just got the governance merge in the last two weeks. So I'm going to skip down to issue 80, um, which had some recent activity and that is sent to us stream nine in WSL. Let me go ahead and grab that and actually put it in the browser. So hang on a second. Um, so we had a recent conversation after some information had been pushed into it that there is a workaround, but it does involve creating an image. Um, so there's two aspects of this where this would be a really good thing that would be under the SIG Council if it existed already versus the board because there's multiple SIGs that are involved. Um, the alt images SIG and the doc SIG. Um, so we actually have a workaround um, as soon as we can get documentation and an alternative image then we can actually make progress on this issue finally. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, a non-workaround situation is still held in legal, but we feel that if we can get the workaround up and running, um, then we can go ahead and close this because there is a way for people to move forward on this. Um, so council hat, I think this, I think that is correct. Now I'm gonna switch hats. Alternative images hat. Um, some it would be great if somebody put this on one of our issues so that we could track it. Uh, there's various issues. I'm not sure we can do this with Kiwi. We might be able to. Uh, if we did uh, image builder, we've already had discussions on image builder. Um, so anyway, it would be good to put that on uh, alternative images, make an issue, a feature request. Um, and link to this. So picking, well, whichever hot hat Josh wants me to be wearing. All right, Josh, you're up while I type. Um, leave your alternative images hat on for a second. Okay. Uh, and then for the rest of the board, I am more than happy to create a tracker and alter all images and the doc sig for those two specific items to close them out. If we do that, what value does the board ticket have? I feel like we can close it saying, we're gonna tackle this in two ways. Here are the two two issues uh, and follow those. No, I'm okay with that. Um, okay. And we can kind of keep working on the legal issues on the downside. But yeah, if we have a way forward for this, it does not need to li live underneath the board anymore. So I'm okay. writing that Josh will make issues. I will make issues. Davide. Uh, I'm also okay with closing this if we have follow-ups that we can refer people to. Uh, do we have 
the, the legal side of things, do we crack that somewhere or is it just right of internal? Um, uh, I can speak to that. It is Red Hat internal for now. Uh, I will work with Bex before he disappears to figure out how we want to phrase it in the ticket. Okay, thank you. So you're going to put a comment in here before we close it. Yeah, it'll it'll be all the same comment with the two links to the the issues that I am going to create. I'm really good at assigning work to other people. Excellent. All right, <laughs> comment added. I believe I worded it correctly. Um, so that's the end of the issues. We are at 21 minutes left. Sean, you are up. Okay, I, I'm gonna quickly return to, um, I, I didn't realize you had the other issues on, in the on hold on the SIG review one. So you're right that the software collections is in there. Um, uh, software collections and core, I think we we talked about revisiting after uh, seven went EOL, which has now happened. So maybe that's a conversation that we should um, bring up. Um, and, um, I feel like infrastructure might be very related to this conversation we were having with Brendan earlier. So um, the other three, I think, are, are on the retirement process. Um, OK, so I'm going to go into, actually, since we're talking about uh, SIGs, um, I'm going to put in a mention here, my, the, the, my second item here, the ops tools and messaging SIGs. They are active. They are producing artifacts. Um, but the I think the last time I, I or when I sent out for the SIG reviews and, and um, the quarterly reports, um, it's basically uh, Matthias Runga uh, who runs these and they're largely run by scripts and stuff. But he's he's indicated that he um, maybe will have less time for these things going forward um, and that he may need help. So I want to bring that to the board's attention that those two SIGs are um they're not inactive but they're uh, perhaps struggling um so there's something to keep an eye on and maybe if we want to um talk about how to revitalize them or how they fit into um stuff i don't know if anyone has opinions or tap it up uh, I don't have opinions specifically on these SIGs, but I would say that uh, if the person running them is comfortable, uh, it would probably be valuable for them to ask in the well if anybody is interested in helping out and maybe like promoting what the SIGs do, what they're about, uh, what they provide, and if anybody is using the artifacts they produce, if they find them useful, if they would like to contribute and these kind of things. We can also look at maybe doing a blog post if they think that would be helpful, but I would really want to give agency to the person running the six to decide how they want to move forward here. Okay. Any other opinions on SIGs in general or these things? Do we have a minimum membership requirement? Do we need to have a minimum membership requirement uh, artwork is big as one human no as well technically okay there needs to be a board member representative and then other than that one other person but maybe it can be the same person okay but no we do I was not just have that. If, like saying to be active you need to have at least two people that might help in this situation where it sounds like it's one person and some scripts that is ops tools and messaging. Davida? I don't know if I want to necessarily make this perspective. I do think there is value for the board to track the overall health of SIGs. Uh, like I know that's one of the bullets in the reports that SIGs are supposed to put out, but I think it would be useful for the board to have kind of a bird's eye view of we have these many SIGs, how many people are in each of them, uh, like how often do we get communication out of them and like I think just having Sean highlight when he notices the six might be struggling is probably good enough. But if this is definitely something that I think the board can add value in making sure that the community is in a good place and offering help when needed. I'm good with that. Anyone else? 
All right, your first point, Sean. All right, then I'll go back to the first point. Um, so I, I talked to some of you at the at the face to face at Flock um, uh, about doing a uh, doing two virtual events a year. I think is the number we came to two or three. I think two, um, like half day virtual events. Um, the CentOS showcase, I think, is the name that got bantered about. Um, and so I was trying to put one of those together. Um, uh, and looking at time frame, I was looking at October. October got difficult because of um, it was like ATO and David is out and the name is out for something. And so like October really sucked. And so I was looking at the beginning of November. Um, uh, Amy was making the point of of a Monday is probably better for people based on you know if they're if they're doing this as as part of their work, which I think a lot of centers people are. Um, Fridays kind of um, are hard for people, especially like Europeans. We you know like they've checked out for the weekend. Um, by the time we do stuff. So um, I was talking then to Justin, who is, uh, I was in the planning meeting for their, uh, they'll do a release party as they do every six months, because they do a release every six months. And they're looking at the timing of their release party being sometime in November, uh, later November likely, just based on the release date. Um, and so Justin was asking if we could program any CentOS content um, for uh, for the release party, um, and then he's asked. Uh, the conversation went to like, should we just have something with part of the release party versus having our own virtual event? But I think the feedback I've gotten is that we um, we would like to have a CentOS virtual event because it's visibility for the project versus just having some talks embedded into um, something else. But this is. I don't know. This kind of like relates to the whole conversation we're having here about about how much to uh, join forces and do stuff with Fedora. So I, I just kind of wanted to get people's feedback on: Do you want a CentOS virtual event, and uh, how do we make sure that we're not conflicting and stuff? David, then Troy. Uh, I think we can have both. To be honest, I think there really is value in having a CentOS event. Like we talked about having a place where six can showcase their progress, their activity, their deliverables as something that they can do periodically, like every six months or so. And I think there is value in doing that and doing that very clearly as a like CentOS branded thing. That doesn't mean we can't also have a presence at Fedora events like the release party. Uh, like I could see, for example, uh, the like a variation of the talk you gave at Summit that went over like what, what various SIGs do within CentOS, that would probably be a good one for the release party and it might give exposure to people that aren't necessarily closely paying attention to CentOS to what's going on in CentOS. Sean, answer or move to Troy? Um, uh, oh, I, I, I I can I can uh, definitely look at doing that one. I hadn't considered doing that one for the release party. I think that's a a good candidate. Okay, Troy. Um, the one, and this is a personal thing. The one thing I don't like about the release party is that it's on Friday and Saturday, and I've yet to attend any of the Saturday talks unless I'm giving a presentation there. So I like your idea of having it on a Monday and having it separate, but I also don't mind us giving some talks during the, the release party. So, and that's one of the reasons why we looked at Monday versus Friday, because if you have it at a time where EMEA folks can join, um, it becomes after work on a Friday and they're probably gone, whereas someone might be more willing to stick around on a Monday than on a Friday. So that's kind of how we looked at it. And, and Troy, I'll warn you that one of the topics that came up was uh, um, having something about Apple. Everybody always wants to hear from Apple. And I and I said, like, you, you know, you guys always present the state of Apple at Flock and the state of Apple at Connect. And then, like, uh, how often do we want to present the annual state of Apple, right? I, I, I think you and Carl have both brought that up with me. So. I I think during COVID was the max if we did it like every other month um, because there's so many virtual things. <laughs> that, that was a little too much. 
just don't so, put annual in the name of the presentation. I think it's <laughs> Josh. Yeah, I was just gonna say like, um, I think particularly at this moment in time, continuing to report out on progress on Apple is actually really timely because everybody knows there's a new rel release coming. And so like, it gives us more opportunity to just say like, look at the awesome work the community is doing to get ahead of the curve, right? That's a good point. And, and we have graphs for that too, already. We will rename the annual Apple update. Anybody have anything else on this? At one point, we thought about November 1st, but I think that ended up being a Friday and we were all going to wear Halloween costumes. So <laughs> if there's also a theme that anybody wants for these things, let Sean know. I'll wear a Halloween costume if we do it right by Halloween. I don't care. It sounds fun. Uh, is, is November 4th a good date? It would be it's the first Monday in November. Um, I'm kind of watching what Fedora does with their release party. I don't know if we want to like at least have a couple weeks between. I also don't want to go too late because then we start really getting into what I'm trying to do a CFP for. And the following week is KubeCon. Um, the day zero starts on November 12th. Um, I'm going to say Neil and David. I did not see what order you both popped up in. Uh, please don't put them on the same week because uh, if I have to do presentations for both the Fedora release party and whatever this is, I will not have enough energy left to actually give them. So no. practice considerations here, please. That's fair. There's only so much tap my body can be stretched. Um, I was going to say, but because this is a virtual event, we have more flexibility. So yes, I agree with Neil. We don't need to put them back to back to make it easier for people to travel. So I, I think we can work it out and it should be fine. Okay, but it does seem like everyone is in favor of the idea. So it's just a matter of finding the right timing for this and not too close to connect where we might lose a potential talk or be giving the same talk too close together. Anything else on this topic? No. Uh, All right. No. We I'll add a third bullet point to my update, though, which is that um, uh, Amy and I talked to Dorka at Flock, and I have subsequently emailed Dorka and Natalie to get bits for. Uh, connect based on my assumption of when Fosden will be. So that's in progress, FYI. And if anyone knows for sure when Fosden would be, please share. Uh, and I did add that as a bullet point for you, Sean. Okay, we are sitting at eight minutes left. Do we have anything else anyone wants to bring up in the room? Just catching up on the chat real quick to see if I missed anything. Okay, there's nothing in the chat. Going once, going twice. All right, everyone gets eight minutes back in their afternoon, evening, possible morning. Take care, everyone.